going on everyone miles here from interloper and today i'm going to teach you how to play a couple parts from our track silence off of the revenant legacy ep so let's get into it the tuning for this song is e flat standard on a six string and drop a flat on a seven string this song is also in the key of e minor however throughout this uh, lesson i'll be referring to it in f minor as if we're playing in standard tuning so this for example would normally be a c in this tuning it is a b However, um, I refer to the fretboard as if you're in standard tuning pretty much constantly. So, just heads up. Let's get into it. So the first part I want to go over is the intro slash verse, and that goes like this. <laughs> So let's take a closer look at how I play this intro slash verse riff from this song. We'll talk about the technique and I'll point out a couple things that make it tricky or that might make it easier for you to play. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do a little bit of an analysis and see kind of what's going on harmonically with it. So what we're going to be doing here, slow, this lick goes like this. <laughs> One more time, even slower. So this is all alternate picked. There's one note that I slide, but outside of that, every single note is alternate picked. So what you'll see in the beginning of this, this part right here, that part's a little bit tricky because it switches from inside picking to outside picking the second time you play it. So what you have here, all of these notes and these pick strokes are going to be in between the strings. And then on that, that's where it repeats, and now you're doing outside because you're starting that um, pattern with a downstroke now. So that's, wow, geez, downstroke now. So what you <laughs> so what we have is that downstroke right there. Now that flips the picking pattern. So you go from hitting these inside to going and that feels a lot different. So that's something that can be kind of tricky about this lick here. So what we're going to see now is going from there we have there's that slide from the 6th fret to the 10th fret. So we're going from our uh, A flat to our C right there. And you might have noticed that I did two downstrokes in a row there. So I do this slide with a downstroke. And then I hit those two notes right there. I start that with a downstroke. The reason I don't go down, slide, up, down is because that would make the rest of the lick start with an up right here. And now when you go to play this entire thing over again, when it repeats, you're going to be playing it starting with an upstroke, which is... Um, not not usually ideal. So what I do here is uh, that downstroke, slide, down, up, right there. So nice and slow. And that allows you to play the rest of the riff with the downstroke, ending with an up to go to the repeat with a downstroke to start over. So one more time. So that's how I play uh, this this lick. There's a little bit more to it. There's one other part actually. It's uh, in, in between, and you go so nice and slow. And that's it. And you actually do play that on a seven string, but you can get away with it on a six. You're just playing the same notes. Um, they're just inverted. So there we go. So let's go ahead and talk about what's happening in this section harmonically. Like I said earlier, the song's in the key of E minor. However, I like to refer to everything on the fretboard as if we're in standard tuning. So granted, this is really, you know, an E. I'm going to refer to that as an F as if we would be in standard tuning. So going from there, um, this F minor scale is what this is all built off of. And that goes like this. <laughs> So going from there, this section is in the key of F minor, and it very much, you know, the melody highlights that, and you'll see that here. That goes. That's what sticks out in these kinds of riffs, that, that type of thing. Same thing with, say, maybe. You're hearing. That's what really pokes out. And if we look at those notes that are being highlighted in this, just those three right there, 
that's an F minor triad. So it absolutely does fit within that. However, this section is more so going to be in D flat Lydian, and I'll explain why. So what D flat Lydian is, that's going to be the mode we build off of the sixth scale degree of this F minor scale. So we'd go, and that's going to be that D flat right there. And the mode we play there is Lydian, and you play that like this. And so, why this section is built off of that, that is the note we keep bouncing back to during this. That's going to be in there. So looking at the importance of that, we have... Those are the notes that we're playing in almost this entire lick up until the end. So if we look at those notes within that Lydian mode, we have the root, third, fifth, and seventh. What that creates is a D flat major seven chord. So this entire section is ultimately highlighting a D flat major seven chord up until it ends. So let's talk about what happens there. We have that note right there, that high note. So we go from the A flat down to the G. So looking at the importance of that introduction of that G note in here, that's a really important note in this Lydian scale. In fact, that's the note that separates us from the major scale. So looking at what we would be having if we, say, played our Ionian mode, our major scale, right here, we have that perfect fourth right there. And if we do it over Lydian, Lydian has a sharp four comparatively. So that's going to be the note that sets it apart. So if we base a lick around those two modes and we do the same exact thing, we would have this over Ionian. Sounds very neutral, like a open world RPG loading screen or something, right? And then if we do that over Lydian, using that sharp four instead, it's a totally different sound. It's night and day. That one's like spacey or oriental. So looking at this entire lick front to back, we're only playing five different notes. We have root, third, sharp four, fifth, seventh, octave. So this encompasses the Lydian mode 100% and the chords that would be played basically over the entire first portion of it up until that very last chord change would be a D flat major 7 and then we get the sharp 4 at the very last. And that gives it that Lydian sound. So ultimately this section is 100% just a D flat major 7 add 4 and um, if you were speaking like out of key it would be a D flat major 7 add sharp 4. So Going from there, let's go on to the next part. So the next part I'd like to talk about is the second verse, and that goes like this. So now let's talk about the second verse. This is probably the trickiest part in the song to play. It's uh, very demanding on the picking hand. I would say uh, it's an alternate picking assault, so to speak. And then you have some sweet picking in there as well. So I'll go ahead and play it slow, and then I'll uh, break down how I play it for you. So here it is slow. <laughs> So that's the first part of this. So it's all alternate picked. You're doing it across multiple strings. So it's, you know, incorporating inside picking as well as outside picking. You get a bit of a string skip right there. So nothing too crazy, but you really, really want to make sure you're picking this with all alternate picking. Otherwise, you're, you're going to have a bad time. And then you have uh, one pretty big skip right here. So you're skipping from here to there. It's a pretty, pretty big jump. That's another tricky thing. So how I play those sweeps right there, I used to, I used to alternate pick the whole thing actually. But that uh, makes your life a lot more difficult with this lick. So what you can do is you sweep it. So I'm going to be doing a down, pull off, up, up, and then down, up, up, up. Right there. So that's where you get the sweep. Right there. And so doing it with that picking pattern is probably going to make it a little bit easier for you to play. So there's a couple of variations in this. There's one, and then the very end, there's one more as well. So the other variation we get is on the sweep arpeggio part. We go from here, and I switch to alternate picking for that. So it's a little sweep, and then right there, down, up, down, up again. So, and then we hop right back to start the lick over again. 
Now at the very end, we get um, some arpeggios. These are played as uh, triplet sixteenths, so they're they're pretty quick and pretty difficult. So what we have is. Let me uh, redeem myself and play those well. Right there. So that's the lick at the end. That that's a really difficult one to get in. And so for a sweet picking like that, any any sort of like three string shape that I do, um, same picking pattern. So it's going to be after you repeat it once, it's going to be up, pull off, up, down, down, down. So you get this kind of thumb motion here. Right there. So that's the whole lick. So basically this, this one you really want to have solid alternate picking for to be able to get these. That part's a really tough one. You gotta have some string skipping capabilities here to get from to that. And uh, then some sweet picking really at the end with the... God. There we go, jeez. So that's how I play this lick. And uh, good luck. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening harmonically in the second verse. This is an incredibly simple part. It is just very difficult to play. But the idea behind it is very, very simple. We're now in F minor proper. We're not playing in a mode of it like we did in the previous lick, for example, where we were in D flat Lydian. This is just flat out F minor. So the first two chords we're going to be playing and the two chords that make up almost this entire riff actually are just going to be F sus2. And then... F minor, so we're going to have root fifth, second there, technically the ninth where it's showing up, but going from there, and then the third right there, so is what you're hearing, or the voice differently. So we're just playing them like this now, and what you're really hearing, if we were to play it as chords, right there, it's that simple. And then we get to the arpeggios here, and those two, uh, no surprise, are also F minor, F sus2. Same chords we've been working with prior to that. So we're just doing this, really. It's just played. Nice. Right there. You're just hearing it arpeggiated the entire time. So now we have one other variation. We get this. Oops, excuse me. That E right there, that's the, uh, again, another five note lick, excluding the last two chords. That's the only other note that's in this, aside from the root, second, third, and the fifth. We have the seventh now, right there. And how this is functioning, although in this circumstance, I mean, it's happening so fast, it's, you know, it's not really doing much. It just sounds cool. But what the actual function of that note, if you were to look at it probably a little bit deeper than we need to be, would be that that is the leading tone to F. So you'd be hearing that resolution right there. Again, I think it's kind of irrelevant because of how fast this is happening. But anyways, going from there, last change we have, the only other chords that are in here are these two. Well, technically it would be a uh, fully voiced because we have this G fully diminished chord and then down to E. And how those work, they want to resolve, well, technically the fully diminished wants to resolve. You can go from there to F, but this last one, the E, that E being the middle of this fully diminished seventh chord wants to go right there, and you can hear that. Or if I were to do, say, excuse me, it sounds exactly what you want to hear, right? So that's what's happening harmonically in this. It's ultimately just F sus2, F minor, F minor, F sus2, and then from there we get the uh, G fully diminished, and then the E fully diminished. And the next part, shockingly, starts on F. So that's the second verse from Silence. Well, thanks for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and learned a few things that maybe you didn't know before. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. Interloper has an LP coming out very soon, so keep an eye out. We'll see you later.